Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the Unspoken Heart Show. Um, you're here with your host, Spicy Gray. Uh, we have a lot of things going on this week. Um, also, um, <clears throat> we're going to be discussing today, and the title is, Our Relationship Isn't Their Relationship. Um, I'm going to turn over here and see if, um, some people I can invite in. And let me see here. Okay. Hi, Darren. I see you on here. Good evening, Joe Breeze. Thanks for joining in. As I said, we're going to be talking about our title today, which is Our Relationship Isn't Their Relationship. Uh, we have a lot of this going on where we invite other people into a relationship we have that we should not do. Uh, before I start with that, um, I want to go ahead with the, an announcement, uh, and then I'm going to let you know towards the end about our next special guest that we're going to be having next week. Um, hi, B. How we doing? Thank you for tuning in. On uh, one of the announcements of February 8th, which is this Saturday, uh, please excuse my voice. It is real raspy right now. I've been sick this week. I've been going through a lot of things, tired. So we're not sounding too good today. Hopefully I can get it better before Saturday. If not, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, there is going to be San Antonio's first annual African American Book Festival this Saturday. And it's from 10.30 to 4 p.m. I am chosen as one of the authors that's going to be there. But there's other authors that was chosen as well. And y'all be able to uh, hear the presentation of the authors that's here in San Antonio that also have books. Um, I don't know what all they're going to have to offer. Uh, me, myself, I will have the Unspoken Heart books there ready to sign and stamp. You will receive a bookmarker. I'm checking on the status of the T-shirts because when I checked on them earlier, they was having uh, trouble with the ink. So hopefully I'll be, they'll be able to have those t-shirts ready by this evening or by tomorrow after I get off of work. If so, we will also have the t-shirts there. Um, I know some people were kind of leery about the price, but as we need to do when we start supporting, you know, our people that are authors, people that are doing things in the community, uh, we have a lot of us that don't support. I mean, even if it means you just showing up, that's showing some type of love. Um, like I said, um, I am waiting on the um, status on the T-shirts. Um, hopefully, they'll be ready by this evening or either tomorrow. But we will have the Unspoken Heart T-shirts there to sell as well with the Unspoken Heart books. The books will be going for $10 each. Um, the T-shirts will be $20. These T-shirts are not normal T-shirts to where um, they will fade over time. I've been having these t-shirts since 2014. The way they do the um, picture, it is actually burned into the threading. So it does not fade or anything like that. So um, these t-shirts, they do last a long time. I've had them in the washer, the dryer, because I also use them when we go out to pass out flyers for our Christmas events for the volunteers. So we've been having them since 2014, and they still look new. There's no problems with them. But like I said, those T-shirts will be going for twenty dollars each. They will only be five of them sold. Uh, we will have the sizes from small to extra large. Uh, the books will be going for ten dollars. When you come and purchase your book, I will give you a bookmarker to go with the book, and you also will get an autograph and stamp while we're there. Uh, they, like I said, they, um, they will also have other authors there. But the children's book exhibit, that's going to start at 1030. And that's going to go on until 1130. Uh, at um, 12 o'clock will be the introductions of the authors. And that will be from 12 to 1 p.m. That is 12 to 1 p.m. after they do the presentation of all the authors, which if you go on to the event or you see on my page, you will see the uh, other authors that will be there as well. For, uh, and they will also have their books for purchase there, too. And that will start about, I think she told me we start at 1230. So the sale, we will be set up and everything uh, so that y'all can purchase your books 
and also the t-shirts for me uh, that'll go on until 4 p.m. So um, they will also have food trucks out there. So there will be food out there for the festival and everything. I hope y'all can understand me because, I mean, <laughs> my voice is really bad. Um, the food truck that's going to be there is going to be called That's All and Porky J's Barbecue. So they will be having a barbecue there at the Carver Library. Now, for those that don't know where the Carver Library is, it is at 3350 East Commerce. That is 3350 East Commerce Street. It, if you know where the Coca-Cola um, factory is, it's right across the street from there. Uh, so the festival in all will be from 10.30 to 4 p.m. Now, to go on to our discussion, you guys can me, I'm trying to move some things out of the way. I've been working on a lot of projects going towards the event on Saturday, so I got a lot of stuff on my desk. But um, we're going to start off talking about the subject at hand. For those that are tuning in now, um, Darren, Joe, Breeze, B, Michelle, Harry Barnett, hi, how you doing? Conetta, hey, baby, I miss you. Believe me, trust me, I'm going to be down in Austin to visit you. I'm just trying to get some time away so that I can come and sit down and we can talk. That's my best friend all the way from ninth grade. I love her to death. Uh, thank you for tuning in, Jesse Nixon. Aristide Brown, I haven't seen you in a while, man. How you doing? Jesse Nixon, uh, Isaac Barlow, Reggie Wade. Quinetta says she won't be able to make it. Do your thing, love. Thank you, baby, and thank you for your support. I love you so much for that. Now, as we're going on, we're going to go ahead and discuss about inviting people into your relationship. Now, when you get into a relationship, you have to understand, which we all know, common sense, it's not going to be a land in paradise. Everything is not perfect. You know in a relationship, y'all going to have problems. But in a relationship, you should be able to communicate. If you cannot communicate, then there is serious problems. Because if you choose a person to be in your path, in your relationship, y'all should be able to communicate with each other. Yes, we all need somebody to talk to. True enough, I know that. That's, that's very explanatory. But when you're in a relationship and you're having problems, unless you cannot see eye to eye with one another and to where you need to get help, then you will, um, You need to learn how to communicate with one another. Uh, excuse me just a minute. I got my daughter. She's out shopping for me for the event. Oh, she hung up. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, she's been doing my errands, my little assistant. But as I said, um, in a relationship, you should be able to communicate with each other. Along with the communication, you should be able to have understanding. You know, the arguing, the bickering going on, they should not you, in order to communicate with each other, you should be able to talk in a calm way. If you can't find yourself talking calm and you just so upset to where you can't even talk right, then you need to take time apart until you can come together. But the thing about this, when you have disagreements in relationship, women are very, very guilty of this. I mean, I've known some men do it. I've known the men to do it. But there's not a lot of men to do it. Because men, I'm going to be honest, and then, I mean, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Put the comic up there. But men are more to themselves. They keep things in. They do not, they're not quick to, to open up as women are. You know, because like we said in other segments, women are the most emotional creatures. They are quick to express everything out, no matter who's there to talk about it, to hear them out. But the problem at hand is, is who you are allowing in your door of your relationship. You have to be careful. One, you could say family. When you talk about your mother, you talk about your father, father, you talk about your sister, your brother. When you invite them into your business of your relationship, remember one thing. They're not going to forgive that person. No matter what you share with them, they will not forgive them. Even though you might forgive them, you might go back and y'all sit down and talk about it and, uh, and sort it out. That family is not going to forget how hurt you was. They're not going to forget how much that situation impacts everything. But one thing you got to think about as well, 
not just with family, but also with so-called friends. When you're sharing your business about your relationship with these two bracket of people, you got to understand that everybody is not going to give you the right answer. You have to be careful when you open up your business of your relationship with your man or your woman to your friend or your family. Because the thing about that, they can bring a mass of destruction to your relationship. That can be the reason why, because you chose to listen to them in their opinion, not knowing both sides, because we know a lot of us don't tell the full story to where they can sit back and say, okay, wait a minute, hold up, you're wrong. That's not the way you should have handled that. That's not the way you should have talked. No, you approach that situation the wrong way. You have people that are your friends, so-called friends. Because to me, friends, if they're for you, they're going to be honest with you. They're going to tell you something to help you, even when you're wrong. They're going to let you know, look, that one not even right. You shouldn't even do that. You need to go back and you need to correct that. You have a lot of people that say they're your friend, and they're just cheerleaders. They're not there to help you to grow in your relationship. But going back to the bond, if you're in a relationship, you should be able to have a bond with that person that you chose to be with. You should be able to sit down and talk and work things out. If you cannot sit down and talk, and if you can't understand each other to the point to where you have an open mind, not just about what that person feels, but also about your own feelings towards the situation, then why are you even there? Why even deal with it? Why even be in that bracket of a relationship? You have to be able to have a communication with each other to where you could be able to mend together. If you cannot communicate with each other in order to talk with each other about your problem and what's bothering one another and sort it out, you're not going to grow beyond that step, especially if you're thinking about getting married. What's the point? of thinking about marriage if you cannot sort things out in a relationship while you're just going together as man and woman. If you are able to do that, you can be able to grow to the next level. But we have to be careful who we invite into our life. Because even with friends, we have different types of friends. We have friends that are for us, that want to see us happy, that want to see us go to the next level, then want to see you make it. But then you have friends as well that jealous of your relationship, whether they have a man or whether they don't. Now, the ones that don't have a man, my question to you is, why would you take any sort of advice for somebody that's not in a relationship themselves? How can they tell you anything about a situation if they're not in a relationship themselves in order to know what you experienced, what you're experiencing, unless they've been there and they're growing and learning from it. My thing is, each relationship I've been in, I've learned something from it to where I have gained keys in order to help myself to grow, to make myself better for the next relationship. I'm not going to sit here and blame everything on one person if I don't sit back and see what I could have done that could have been wrong. That means even talking to the right people, like me personally, when it's something really serious, my pastor, I do go to. Because I know as if when he calls me daughter, I see him as me being in that place as his daughter. Because when you have your own daughter and your child, you want the best for your child. You want your child to do better than you. You're not going to tell them nothing wrong to help hurt them. You're going to tell them something to help you. So when I'm going through things and I have questions about myself, about my relationship, I go to my pastor because I know he's going to tell me something to help me. I'm not going to go to a friend to where I know, okay, she's a controlling person. Why would I ask her her advice in my own relationship? Because whatever advice she do give me, it's going to be wrong. It's going to hurt me. So I wouldn't talk to her about things. The other thing is, is when you have friends, you have those ones that I call bone collectors. What is a bone collector? A bone collector is a person 
that acts as if you're there, your friend. I don't even know if you want to call them an associate. But what they do, they sit back and they listen to all your business. Everything that you do and say, what you go through in your relationship with your man. So when something happened or when they're miserable, they want something to talk about. They pull one of your bones out of their closet and they go share it with somebody else. They build up everything about you, not themselves, but about you in order to benefit them as in ammunition against you. Those are what I call the bone collectors. They don't see they self. They see you and everything about you, even though you think they're giving you the right advice or they, they, they there to be a shoulder to cry on, you have to be careful because the bone collector can strike at any time. Now, <clears throat> you can have friends also that's called misery. Now, we heard the saying, misery loves company. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, been there, done that, had someone I thought was my friend, thought we had each other's back. And before I knew it, not only was she telling my business to other people, but every now and then she would say a little, I, I guess y'all say slug, as they use it, she will throw a little slug out there. If you're not careful, you can't really read between where she's coming from and what she's doing. But you have those type of friends that no matter what goes on in your life, they're not going to be happy for you because they're not happy within themselves. If they don't have something good on with themselves, especially these women that are out there, I'm not excluding men, I'm talking about women, but you have these women out here, they say they, they, they really like one guy, but they have their men on, other men on benches. Now, whenever they want, they, their heart is in with the, the main player. But they have the ones on the benches. Now, if they are not happy with this one guy, and this one guy is not with you every day, talk to him every day, spending time taking you out, done anything for you, support you in anything, why is he having that privilege of being called your man? But yet still, you go be with other men. You're not happy. So my thing, when you have people in your life that's like that, why would you talk to them about your own relationship? So when they advise you, because my thing is, if you look at this situation, their life is a mess. The puzzle is all over the place. So if their life is so distorted, how can they tell you anything about your relationship or about your man or about your woman? They can't speak on anything. They quick to talk about you, but and try to advise you and tell you, well, girl, you need to leave him. He's no good for you. My thing is the way I see it. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk to somebody that I know that is not in a stable relationship. I'm not going to talk with somebody that feels like they're never wrong in a relationship. That the other party is always wrong instead of standing back and looking at self because women are not always right. We have flaws as well. And I'm going to tell you like this, it's like we really, a lot of women don't understand men, but they're quick to say the man is the problem. Sometimes the man is not the problem. Sometimes we're the problem and it needs to be fixed. But we wonder why we keep getting into failed relationships. When you get to the point to step in the mirror, look at yourself and start blaming other people and start looking at self and start fixing self, then you can see the relationships that you have that failed, sometimes you were the problem. That's just like one person. If you are moved from one school to another school to another school, okay, I can say for one school, fine. But if you're moving a child from more than two schools, 
that takes a time and place where you're going to have to say maybe it's not the school, it's the person. So in that, what I'm getting at is that if you see this person have these type of problems, why would you share with them the problems that you have in your own relationship? They're not going to mean you no good. You have to take time and look and see, one, why would you, if you cannot work things out in communication with the person you chose to be with, why don't you sit back and think, why did I choose them? Did I choose them so that when we have problems, I can invite everybody into our business? No. Why did you choose that person if, and why are you with that person if you cannot communicate with them? If you cannot be able to talk to them about the problems that y'all having or what is bothering you? Because like I said, when you invite family and friends into your relationship, they can make it worse than what it is. Sometimes you need to keep other people out of your relationship business. Because I'm going to say like this, Sometimes you can have a mother. And I mean, I know us girls, I mean, us women, us men, we love our mother. We want more than anything to be saying, okay, our mother is the one person I know that can tell us right. Our mother is the one thing that we know that we can trust and confide in and she can tell me what's right to where I, I can see how to fix this. Some might not believe this, but sometimes it's best not to tell your mother your business because not only she doesn't forgive that person, but sometimes she cannot tell you the right thing. And I'm going to say this also with the ones that have the history of experience, uh, how can say exposure from domestic violence. If your mother's still dealing and living with the person that abused them, and she has not healed from that, why would you open your doors of your relationship to your mother? Because one, your mother's going to have anger towards the man that abused her. And this goes for women also that hasn't left the abuser or that has left and not healed. If your mother has not left that relationship, from the person that had abused her, whether they still abusing her or whether they not abusing her, but she's holding a lot of anger. She's never gotten help for that. So she has not healed. Tell me, is that the best person to go to about your relationship problems? No, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it at all. Especially because one, this is just my opinion. If you have a mother in that situation and she has this anger towards men because of what she's been through, do you think she's going to want to be happy for you in your relationship? Do you really think that she's going to be the best person to advise you on what to do right or to tell you what you're doing wrong or what you can do better in a relationship to grow with your man? No because she hasn't got help for herself. And sometimes you gotta see if she hasn't got help for herself, she got a lot of anger towards a man you too. So she's not gonna be happy for you. She's not gonna tell you what's right. She's not gonna want you to be happy because she's not happy. She's hurting. Because, I mean, you listen at times people that have been and are in domestic violence relationships. Over time, that hurt turns into anger, especially when they haven't got help. I know someone say, well, I don't need help. I'm not with him no more. Well, if you think you don't need help, that's fine. That's your comfort zone. But I'm going to put it like this. If you still have anger for what somebody did to you in the past, if you still have a reaction to that, 
you haven't healed. And you could take that anger towards your daughter's relationship, the man, as soon as she tell you something, mama, he's quick to go off. Mama, I can't talk to him because when I try to talk to him, he ignores me or he starts getting angry. She's not going to be able to tell you what's right. So who can you talk to? Another thing is, as I said, anybody's relationship that is broken, that person is not the right person to get advice from. But you also got to look at, and I had to learn this too. Trust me, I'm not perfect. I've been through that, been there, done that, and learned the hard way. When you in a relationship with somebody, you should be able to talk with one another without inviting other people in. You should be able to sit down and be able to come to reason within the disagreement and see where y'all went wrong and where can you, can you correct it. Now, if you have somebody that's just one-minded, which sometimes our women, we quit to just go off, not listening, but if you sit down and just be quiet sometimes and listen, you'll be able to see where a person is coming from and actually break it down what you really meant, how that made you feel, and what y'all could do together to make it better. Because you cannot work something together if you only see your feelings. You got to be able to understand and be compassionate to that other person's feelings as well. Because anytime you go to another person, you open a door to where they're going to tell you, girl, you stupid. You should, I don't see why you're there. I wouldn't put up with it. Well, that's not her relationship. That's not her man. As one girl, I heard tell this other girl, well, because she, she dated black men, but this other girl told her, well, I don't date black men, so... He's not my preference. My thing, I said to myself, well, he didn't choose you. She's not sleeping with you. She's sleeping with him. So that's why was that her opinion? And why did she feel so comfortable to where she could feel like she could just say that? We got to learn how to communicate with the people we choose to be with. We have what they call the honeymoon stage. And we're not talking about in marriage. We're talking about in a relationship. When you first start off and you're all giggles and smiles and glow until that first day hit when you have that first disagreement. Is it him you're going to talk to? Or are you going to somebody you call your friend? And if you go to that friend, I'm going to say that was the first wrong step. Because your first argument, why would you be quick to run to somebody else to tell them about your business? They're not the person you have in the problem with. They're not the person that you live with. They're not the person that you're having a relationship with. The person you have the relationship with is the person that you should be talking to. The other problem is, and I see it a lot on Facebook, because if y'all see over the years, I've been on here for many, many years. And the one thing I don't like, <clears throat> and now they've got a lot of videos, it's even worse. Everybody telling their business. It's just like the broadcast of business. When you're in a relationship, I'm going to say this. When you begin to get in a relationship, there's nothing wrong and I mean, I, I feel privileged. If you're in a relationship and he changes his status to in a relationship with this person. That's fine. That's, let, that's closing doors for other options to enter. That's letting people know, okay, I'm taking. 
But that's as far as it should go. They shouldn't hear about your arguments. They shouldn't hear about your problems or how you feel about that person. Because I'm going to tell you, I didn't see one that uh, post. And then I seen another live video. One minute, she's mad and she goes off on him. Well, pl wait, wait, let's back up. First, she's in love. She's so in love to where she's posting everything about what they're doing. The flowers he buy, going out to dinner and how he... You know, they're coloring up, looking at TV and whatever. But then, a month later, I said about a month or two later, you see on her on their, her going off. And then she's going at the woman. And then she's going at him. And then two weeks later, she back in love with him. But she makes the statement. How did she put it? She put it as, no matter what y'all say out there, Speaking of females, I'm not going to use the exact word she used. He always come home. Y'all put too much y'all business on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to turn on TV or Showtime or look at uh, Snapped or whatever. All you got to do is turn on Facebook Live. People tell all their business all day on there. And it's sad. Because what you felt at that time towards that woman that he messed off on you with, at that time, what was going on between you and him should have stayed there. Everybody don't need to know your business. Because for one, they don't know him and they don't know you. But you just don't know how it does not look good on you when you get on there doing that. It makes you look really, I hate to say cheap or either naive. I don't know. But I wouldn't get on there. Because, I mean, everybody has family problems. Everybody has disagreements with a man. There's a lot of people that's been cheated on. But why would you go on here and tell your business? Because just like your friends or so-called friends, trust me, I look at when people come talk to me about somebody else. Unless it's like my best friend, Cornetta, we have secrets from years, years, years. And we know our body, we know where we stand. But if you listen at some people, you can tell it. You didn't open your business about your relationship to your so-called friend. But then she go tell her so-called friend, don't say nothing, but girl, let me tell you. And she's stupid. She dumbest. Now, some people will feed into that and then go tell the next person and tell the next person. Until they get back to that person that your so-called best friend and told you business. But I'm going to look at that person as you sitting up here talking about that person's relationship. Man, I could really, I could really think how you would talk about me. That's why I say you got to be careful who you talk to. Because instead of looking at what they're gossiping about, or how they're pulling people's bones out their closets. You have to think, if you ever have a disagreement with that person, and females have it bad, she is going to tell all your business. Because the mere fact is, if she was quick to tell you that person's business, and that's supposed to be her friend, if she was quick to tell you about her relationship, Trust and believe there are going to be a day to where y'all have a disagreement to where she's going to tell yours. Or maybe y'all don't have a disagreement. She could be telling yours now. Because the same girl that she's talking to you about, she could be talking to her about your business. See, that's why we got to be careful when we tell people our business about our relationships. We don't want everybody in our business, but everybody going to end up being in our business because we don't know how to choose our friends wisely. Or we cannot discern what is really a friend, what's an associate, and what is somebody that you just got to be careful of. I've learned the hard way. Don't tell all your business. One thing I'm not guilty of, I don't tell my business on Facebook. Y'all might see a relationship status that change. You might even see the picture, but you won't see everything that go on between us. Not even a disagreement. Now, if I put something on here, like I, I know I think it was in October, 
about my former former um, engagement. That was to help somebody. Hello, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but Hidi, Hidi, or Needy, Needy. <laughs> Hello, thank you for tuning in. Hi, Dion, how you doing? But like I said, you have to be careful how you invite your friends into your relationship. Because it's just like the mother, the father, and the child. That child relationship is separate from the father's relationship. That child's relationship with the mother is separate. Now, both of them have a love for that child, but the relationship they have with the child is separate. That should be the same thing when it comes down to your relationship. Your friendship and your relationship is two different things. And sometimes it's not good to be shared. I mean, even when you have family sometimes, you got to be careful of that. But like I tell some, uh, some of these females, you have to be careful when you tell somebody about your man, especially how good he is. Because you had those slick women. Mm -hmm. You think that you sharing some joy in your life with them and letting them know how good you feel. But at the same time, they're like, dang, I would like to know how that is. That's why I got to place. I say, my next man, no, <laughs> I'm careful with I'm careful because as you go through things, you have to learn through them. If you don't learn through them, you won't grow at all. You got to learn what the difference is between friendship, your relationship with your family, and your relationship with your man. Those are different situations. You should be able to have a relationship with your man to where y'all could talk to each other. You can let him know your concerns, your wants, your needs, your hurts, to vent with. With your friendship, that should be something separate to where you keep your relationship about your man separate. Because I'm going to tell you, I have one friend, and a lot of people say, well, she's very private. And I respect her for that. Hey, Dion. <laughs> I like the way she is. Me, personally, I do. They say she's antisocial. My thing is, if you get to know her, she's not really antisocial. She just separates being a coworker, from being a friend, from her relationship with her man. And I have nothing but respect for that. And actually I learned from her for, on that. You know, uh, as we grow in a relationship, even if you're coming from going together to a fiance, that's a step. But you got to sit back and think, have you learned something from the fiance to from being just going together? Because to me, those are steps. That's supposed to be growth spurts before you actually get married. But like I told y'all before, we have to learn what is our friend's business and what isn't. You might have trust with that person to where you say, oh, no, they would never do that to me. But then you want to be shocked when they do. Or you want to get mad because when your relationship don't work, they're going to be like, well, girl, I told you. Well, you don't want to tell me to leave him. You say he wasn't no good for me. Well, I didn't per se tell you to leave him. Yes, you did. You exactly said, girl, why are you still with him? But see, you can't blame your friend. You're going to have to blame yourself. Because my thing about it is, if you would have never took open up to her about your business and took her advice, 
and focus on separating your relationship from your friendship, it could have probably worked. And I know some, they'd be like, well, I didn't want to talk to him about it because I didn't want to burden him. And girl, then why are you with him? It shouldn't even be considered a burden. If you feel like you're burdening him when he didn't told you, babe, all you got to do is talk to me. All you got to tell me is what you want and you need. I'm here for you. But you still hold him back like, well, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't want to do that to him. Baby, then why are you with him? Because it's a situation to where y'all should be able to be there for one another. It shouldn't be a one-sided thing. Excuse me just a minute. Hey, yes, Jill. Go eat the lobster. Okay, sorry about that. My baby boy just got in from school. Um, they went and picked him up for me. Um, <clears throat> he wanted to give me a hug and a kiss. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that you shouldn't have to feel burden if you're in a relationship with somebody. The relationship meaning that you're there for each other. It shouldn't be, well, um, you got to pay me that back. If you're in a relationship and you're growing to love each other, you're supposed to be there for each other and be there towards walking of the doors of being one. Why do you have to pay that person back? I don't understand it. That's not a relationship. That's a friendship. You pay your friends back. Things should in a relationship be from the heart. It shouldn't be you owe me. Because I'm going to tell you, as soon as a man tell me, oh, well, you're going to have to pay me that back. I'm going to be like, don't worry about it. And it's not because I don't want to pay him back. It's because that's not the type of relationship that I want. If we're going to have a relationship, we should be able to be there for each other. That's just like me with my mother. If she borrowed money from me, I'm not going to ask her to pay it back because that's my mother. If you love your mother, why should you have to, why should she have to pay you back? Did she ask you to repay her for having you? For giving birth to you, to providing for you all those years? No. So you should do for your mother no matter what. In all actuality, it should go both ways. Y'all should go be there for each other. Now, I thank y'all for tuning in. Um, I hope this is helping somebody, and I hope it opens your eyes. You know, I've been thinking about this for a minute, and <clears throat> it's like everything that you go in life, you walk in life with, you have to take it as a tool to learn. Each relationship that you've been in, question if you ever learned anything from it so that you may grow for, to be stronger and more wiser for the next one. And that one thing is keeping your business to yourself. I know you have anger sometimes and feel overwhelmed where you need somebody. We all need somebody to talk to. But be careful who you talk to. But my thing is in relationships, if that's your relationship, why can't you be able to communicate with each other, to talk with one another, to where there's no outside people being involved in your relationship? Nobody should have any mouth on your relationship at all. Nobody should have weight on how your relationship should go. My thing is like this. People could sit here and say, well, girl, I don't think he's going to be good for you. I'm going to tell them just like this. Not that I asked your opinion, but thank you, but no thank you. 
It's for me and him to learn one another. It's not for you to learn them. He's not, he, he's, you're not the one he chose. He chose me. Now, in that, I must say, if somebody, if you've been warned about somebody in their history by more than one person, we sometimes need to listen. But if this person don't even know your man, why would you listen to anything they have to say? It's not for nobody to have any type of weight on your relationship. They should not be able to control the way you react towards your man. They shouldn't be able to control how you respond to your man because that's not their man. That's your man. So if there's any corrections or anything you need to do to please that man, you need to talk to him. You need to ask him, baby, what can I do to please you? What can I do to change this? Should nobody on the outside, not even your mother and dad, should ever say or have say in your relationship. Now, we do have those in-laws to where they all in your business. But I'm going to tell you like this. <clears throat> I had that family member. And they was quick to say or may have an opinion about who I slept with. Believe it or not, you have people like that. The one thing I told them, Please stay out of my undergarments. You're not the one I'm with. I love my family, trust me, but I have learned to not allow them into my relationship. Because as I've had to explain to them before, and I mean, I'm gonna say, I had to make this comment recently. I'm not in a relationship yet, but my relationship is not my mother's relationship. My relationship is not my sister's relationship. My relationship is not my friend's relationship. My relationship is me and my soon-to-be man's relationship. And the relationship that we have it's our business. Now, you have those to where when they don't know your business, they make it their business to assume what your business is because they on the outside looking in. See, when you don't give somebody something to talk about or they can't figure out why are they, why are they happy, why he treat her like that, when you don't open your business to them, they don't know you argue. They don't know what discrimination you have. They don't know what you talk about. When they don't know your business, you got to be careful because sometimes they will tell your business that's not your business. That's why I say be careful the people you invite into your life. Some people are left to be on a bench. And some people are just meant to walk with you. But people are not allowed or should not be in the same house with you as much as the same bedroom. What goes in your bedroom between you and your man is your business. Keep it there. Whatever disagreement y'all have, keep it there. Because that's your relationship. Nobody's relationship but your own. So in saying that, I know it's 549 now. And we're going to head towards wrapping this up. I really hope y'all was enlightened by this and that it did help some. Because just like I'm speaking to y'all, I have to learn it myself. Only I'm not a counselor. I'm not a licensed counselor. Yeah, I'm a meditational coach or well, meditation coach, but I only speak from experience and things that I've learned from. 
I'm not going to speak on nothing that I don't know and haven't experienced. And even me being 49 years old, I had to learn. There's certain people you have to have in certain places. There's certain things that you got to keep separate from certain people. You have your relationship with your man. You have a relationship with your family. You have a relationship with your children. You have a relationship with your coworkers. And you have a relationship with your friends. Those are five different titles that should not be one. They should not be in a room of a group discussion. And be careful who you invite into your relationship because what you're thinking they're doing to help you is actually hurting you. So you got to be careful of that. You can take it or you can leave it. But I know my next relationship, I know how to handle it. Leave outsiders exactly that, outside. Now, we're going to talk about next week. I know y'all seen a post where I said I'm going to have a special treat for you. Uh, actually, February the 13th. And as we go on with the discussions, y'all will begin to see different things popping in. And when I say different things, meaning that my big brother, Ray Sorrell, has been chiming in with me, which I love him so much. I thank him because as he's going up, he's making sure that I'm getting educated and getting you know hooked up on what I need to do with my business as well. So. You're going to be seeing light, lighting changing. You're going to be seeing different things going on here. Um, one day you might pop in here and you see me in a different room. Never know. Uh, we're talking about sounding, lighting. lighting. Um, and one thing that he had enlightened me on is branding my business. So we're working on a logo for the business. So be watching now. There's a lot of things going to be going on. And I am excited, I'm telling tell you. But this next week's get special guests. I am overly excited to tell you, couldn't come at a better time than day before Valentine's. I don't know, some of y'all might have her already on um, your Facebook page. She's under Car Bella. That's with a K-A-R Bella, B-E-L-L-A. She's a very beautiful woman, very beautiful voice. She's an artist and an actress. So she had many talents. Before she goes off to Atlanta, her CD, she has a CD up, CD coming out, and it's called Square Biz. We're going to be having her here on the Unspoken Heart, hearing what she got to say. Maybe we can get her to spit something as well. A little piece from her CD. We'll see what she say. But next week, be watching. We'll have Miss Carbella here on the Unspoken Heart. Now we're going to say the nutrition for today. Before you open the door, inviting anyone into your relationship, realize what sort of mass destruction it could bring between you and the one you're with. If you can't communicate with your man or woman, maybe you should have observed and analyzed their character. And if you could truly reside within, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry, before you choose him or her, then things would be a whole lot different. A relationship supposed to be strictly you and him or her. Unless you're into the swinger swirl. If it's impossible for you to do, maybe you do better by yourself. This is Spicy Gray on the Spoken Heart. I see y'all next week. I hope you enjoyed this segment. Like I said, we'll be having Carbella up on the Unspoken Heart next week. Be looking out, look her up on Facebook. Request as a friend. She's doing big things. Um, we'll be getting more into what she got going on and what's coming up next week because some of the people that she joined up with and some people you didn't see on like love and hip hop and all that. So I think one of them was called the Caribbean Queen. So she's going to be joining up with them. So I see y'all next week. Much love. Y'all have a blessed one. Hope to see y'all Saturday at the first annual San Antonio African American Book Festival. 
I'll be there with the books, T-shirts. See y'all. If y'all want to just come out and show me some love, give me a hug or something, I, I always need the love. I'll see you there, okay? Much love and God bless.